Okay, here's our third video. Um, it's going to be pretty short, about 7.3. Remember, 7.4, we're going to have that video a little bit later. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and um, share our screen. All right. So the idea is a normal plot is a way to see whether or not our data reasonably looks normal. Because having things be normal is so nice, um, being able to see how normal the data is, is going to be a cool thing. So what we do is the normal curve itself, our eye is pretty okay at seeing, but you know what the eye is really good at seeing? Whether or not a line is straight. So what we do is we transform the function. And again, if you think about pre-calc, you can actually imagine how to do this. We're going to take the percentiles of the data and we're going to plot it against the perfect Z percentiles and see how our data works in the data. And again, our book, walk, talks, our book walks you through how to do that manually, but we're going to totally just do it using StatCrunch. And again, you can do it in uh, the spreadsheet, but this is the one part in this whole section where StatCrunch is actually perfect to use. All right, so here's StatCrunch. Let me get on the screen. Here is, oops. Here is our data set. This is just the one we used on lab zero. Remember, there were 21 uh, people, um, men and women, they identified as, and they identified their weight and their height. The graph is just called a QQ plot. So you just come down here and you make a QQ plot. So if we want to make a QQ plot for the height, and again, we don't have to do anything else fancy, what we're going to do is instead of looking at the histogram or whatever to see if the data is normal, and remember the data wasn't very normal when we made the histogram back in that lab, all it does is it makes a little graph like this. So if the data was perfectly normal, it would fall on that red line. The data, a little bit, right? One problem is because uh, the numbers were discrete, right? You have all these ones in a row. So that's actually just an artifact of how the data was collected. If we had more decimals, they might line up a little bit nicer. But the data is pretty, pretty okay as we do that. We could also break it up here, QQ plot. We're gonna look at the heights and we're gonna group it by gender just to see if the men and women uh, had results that look different. So here is our little chart for the females and you can see there's that bump there because again, three people were 65 inches tall, but it's pretty close to the line. And over here, we have the same thing at 70 inches. And in both cases, we'd say, eh, the data is pretty normal, certainly not enough that we would freak out. If we see a pattern to the data or we see um, just some kind of weird shape, you know, if you see something where the data comes along and goes like that, or we see something where the data just doesn't really line up at all, any kind of pattern other than the line is going to be a clue that your data is not very normal. Okay, so this idea again that we're just going to use the QQ plot and we're going to compare to see if it's normal. We can do the same thing for weight. And there it is. Notice this one is a little bit more wiggly. Maybe there's something else going on there. If we group it by gender, you can see that even more. Oops. Let me collect the weight by gender. And you can see here is the weight of the females. Um, you can see here the trend is maybe not quite as good with the weight. Maybe those are outliers. And with the men, we can see the same thing as we look at those responses. So. Again, a QQ plot is um, a pretty straightforward thing. Um, you could calculate it by hand. The book walks through how to do that. But this idea that we're just comparing the percentiles against the normal distribution perfect one to see how it goes. And again, you get a plot that looks something like that. And if the data falls off of the line, this is a much bigger data set. Um, if the data sticks away from the line, that's a sign that your data isn't really normal. So again, this part is pretty straightforward. Um, the book makes it a whole extra section, I think, because some people do do it by hand, although that would be something that I don't think I've ever uh, had a class where I made them do that by hand because that's a very tedious process. And StatCrunch does it so quickly. So that's 7.3.